Hello and welcome to my video series on building a React UI library, uh, library for your internally used at a company or uh, for public facing purposes for your side project. Um, I would say that I'm definitely focusing more on like the internal use of the library. So we're going to go over something important today that kind of distinguishes those two, those different use cases. And that is injecting style. So we're going to be talk talking about CSS style injection and uh, we're going to be talking about TypeScript type exports. Uh, so the first thing is, is that injecting styles in library mode, as you can see in Vite, we do have an open issue here um, that has not been resolved. It's been going on for a while. Let's see, it started in 2021. And uh, there is a January 19th reference here. Fantastic. So um, it's kind of a discussed uh, situation here. Now, one thing you may have noticed in the last video that I made was that if you uh, try to install like npm install the cottage UI library, um, directly from NPM, uh, you actually would not get access to any of the styles. And that's because V does not import or inject styles in library mode, as stated here in the, the issue. Uh, there are a lot of different ways of d solving this problem. Um, you can look through this issue just kind of to get, uh, I want to say, inspiration on how to resolve this. Um, and depending on your use case, it, it's going to be different, right? Like it could be as simple as Hey, I'm going to go ahead and add this intro import style at CSS um, declaration at the beginning of my file so that uh, styles get automatically imported. But then you're dealing with, okay, well, you know, uh, uh, will this work in common JS, which uses require instead of import? Um, and there are some other issues here. There's some more complicated ways of dealing with the problem. Um, there's also the Vite plugin lib inject CSS, which kind of does the same thing as importing, doing the import style at CSS. Uh, but it can do it for you per component, and it uh, actually uh, tells you that you probably should be doing things this way so that uh, when you import button, you only import the styles for the button, not everything else. Uh, so I also so just looking at this, it also has its own drawbacks. Um, so what we're going to do is actually kind of the simplest uh, way, the simplest uh, um, solution that we can come up with here, and that's to... Uh, um, exporting or making the style at CSS from our dist folder available to the target application. Uh, and there are a few th reasons why you might want to do it this way. Um, one of them is that if you're running it internally, um, I think that you know you can set up your, your Tailwind uh, purge and your, your styles purge and stuff like that correctly, and uh, you shouldn't be end up with any additional excess CSS anyway. Uh, but the other thing is that um, let's say that you want to kind of have uh, use your own Tailwind config in your target application and override some of the defaults. And this would allow you to do that. So if you don't import the styles, you just end up with having a class name BG Red 700. But maybe in your uh, target application, BG Red 700 has a custom shade to it. And you want that to be reflected in the UI. So you wouldn't want to uh, have your, your styles imported and used without uh, some kind of an opt out uh, ability. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and expose our style at CSS. Um, there are drawbacks to this as well. You're going to end up with some of the uh, reset uh, CSS that comes with Tailwind, um, but you shouldn't end up with having too much uh, cruft around that and that um, export. And we can re revisit this later in the series as well. Um, but to implement this kind of easiest, most straightforward solution, we're going to go ahead and just export the styles at CSS style with CSS. And we're going to go ahead and just uh, say that we have no side effects in this library. We want to do that. Um, there, there are not going to be any side effects to importing this uh, because you're going to have to directly import the styles. OK, got the side effects. Great. Um, you can kind of look at what how package exports work uh, in, in on this Webpack web page. I'll link it down below. Um, but you know, you basically tell the compiler of the target application uh, what files are exposed and how to get to them, essentially. Um, we're going to just keep it simple and have dist style CSS. We, I don't want to make it too complicated. Cool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bump the version here to 0 0.1.0, uh, just because uh, 0 0.0.1234567891 uh, were kind of more my uh, test versions to make sure that this actually works correctly. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and build this. So we're going to do npm build. Oh, sorry, npm run build. Cool. Uh, and we can do npm publish. Uh, when I do the npm publish, it's going to ask me to log in. So I'm going to actually grab a browser window over here and uh, publish this. 
and log in off, you know, so you all can't see what I'm doing over here. Cool. That should work. Should be a successful. There we go. So now we have a version 0.1.0. Uh, let's go ahead and do create an MP, uh, a, a remix application. Uh, should be somewhere in here. There we go. Um, and we're going to use this remix application to test out that uh, what do we think is working is actually working using a basic template. Yep, just initialize it, do everything you need, and we're going to go check it out. Now, like I said, that is this is one of the uh, options that you have. There are other options. Uh, you can inline your CSS uh, if you set up your stuff correctly. Um, you know, there are a lot of issues here and compatibilities and things to, to consider. So it's, it's not a problem that has been solved completely. Um, this is an example of using the, that plugin, but I just saw that the new version of the plugin came out. So it might be worth checking that out. Um, and we're just going to wait here for the NPM dependencies to install. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. I was going to, I was worried there for a second. Was it my remix app? There we go. Uh, we're going to install cottage UI. Uh, latest and let me go ahead and just start the compiler real quick in the application so I think it's npm run dev if I remember correctly yeah there we go fantastic and it should be local host 3000 cool now we're gonna go ahead and use that cottage UI button to test this out we're gonna go into the route let's import it should be just as simple as uh, importing it this way. And we should see it without styling here. Uh, we're going to delete this. And we're going we're gonna to actually keep this application running for other reasons. Cool. Hey, there it is. Now we want, we want the styles, right? So here is how we import the styles. We're going to go ahead and bulk import the styles. So we're going to do cottage UI, dist, style.css. And that should, yep, it imported our styles. So that is how you re resolve it. So it's, we, we added this exports here, the side effects here, and then in the target application, we imported the, the whole style.css file. Uh, again, like, you know, there might be some extra uh, styles that we're importing that we don't need to, but this is more for like um, mm -hmm. those situations where you're trying to you just build out this library and you want the optimizations to, to happen a little bit later. And if you use a lot of uh, Tailwind, you're going to end up with most of the stuff in here anyways. So should be, you should be good on that front. Now, the next thing we're going to do is uh, set up ty the type system. So one thing you may notice is that right over here, we get this error. Uh, it says could not find a declaration file for module cottage UI. Uh, you know, hey, you gotta you gotta fix this. Do you need to install uh, types? Uh, I definitely don't have types in this place, so we're gonna have to use this solution. There's the Vlead plugin DTS. Let's go ahead and install it. Install. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and actually save the changes here. Okay, point M export styles. And then we're going to go ahead and npm install beat plugin DTS, save dev. Um, there is a cap capital D. I'd like to write it out mostly for the videos. Um, you know, do what, whatever works for you. Let's install it. Do, do, do. Should be here pretty soon. So while it's installing, let's go ahead and just uh, start setting things up over here. Um, to enable styles, it's a little bit silly because there's not a lot of stuff that you need to do here, or not styles, but the types. Oh, there we go, those changed. Um, we would, What we need to do is go into the config, so beat config. Um, we're going to go ahead and import the plugin, import DTS from beat plugin DTS. And we're going to add it over here. Uh, let's go ahead and just put it over here. We're going to say roll up types true. Uh, this is an option that uh, essentially exports all of the uh, all of the typing in a single DTS file. Um, and then we also need to go into our TS config. And this was something I noticed last time. Uh, we're not including our lib files. So we actually do need to include those. Um, and let's see what happens when we do our build. Is it there? Should be there. Cool. 
Uh, now, if we go into our lib, let's look at our styles that we have here. We have the button props over here, um, and that's all we have currently. When we look into our build, we should see a d.ts file over here that actually does declare the button props. So that is already included here. Um, and we also have the typing for the button, which is great. Uh, so that means that once we install this, we should uh, get typing and um, in the target application. So let's just bump it up one version real quick. We're gonna npm build one more time just to make sure that I didn't change anything here. And we wanna make sure it's built with the right version. I actually don't know if the version get, gets included in the export file, but that's fine. I'm gonna do an npm publish. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a window again, just so that I can uh, publish this without worrying about exposing my IP or something to y'all. All right, let's log in. I'm gonna tell npm to stop asking me to log in. And we are done. So we're getting our type exports now. We need to uh, install the newest version of uh, Cottage. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure that we install specifically that version. Change one package, fantastic, npm run dev. Uh, still works, fantastic. And now we're gonna look at the typing. So first of all, our error up here went away. And second of all, we're gonna go ahead and just make this window large. Uh, you can see that it now does type checking against the actual props of the button. Um, I think the only prop we currently have is the child, children. Yeah, there we go. So it does check for it and does let you know. And uh, we do get our uh, typing here um, as like a first class component. So mission accomplished with this one. Uh, if you want to try this out and check it out, um, you can check out the... the uh, the GitHub repo, um, it has all of these uh, commits. I'm making them live. I usually <laughs> make these on the side first and um, have like a PR open with the solution. And then I do this thing where I push up the code live as <laughs> I'm making the video. But thank you for watching. Next video, we're gonna be handling testing. So make sure to subscribe um, and so you can catch that.